Hey, how's it going? I want to talk to you about installing the Tula Yeti Next Mini on a, shall we say, copper mountain bike. So, obviously, bikes come in all, all shapes and sizes, but I'd say a modern copper mountain bike has, you know, sub 70 degree head angle. My bike is a specialized enduro with a 180 fork, so it's probably about 64 degrees by now. And um, yeah, it's not gonna fit. So my first advice, unfortunately, is don't buy it. It's not gonna, it's not gonna fit, but it can be made fit. So I did a bit of uh, sewing and hacking and fighting and drilling to make it fit. And the result is good, actually, pretty good. So, but obviously you're gonna, you're gonna avoid your warranty and stuff. And, and you see this about, I think 80 euros, which depending where you live might be a lot of money or, or not so much, but um, yeah, I, I wasn't too worried about, about in warranty terms, ruining the product. Um, but yeah, basically, the issue is that if you if you mount it uh, as it's meant to be, obviously the idea is that uh, you would remove some of the spacers underneath your stem and above your your top cap or your upper bearing in your tread threadless tapered headset. And um, I'm pretty sure you're, you're going to be losing preload sooner or later. So that's that wasn't really an option for me at least. So I wanted to just clamp this thingy over the spacers that are underneath my stem. And yeah, it, 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 it can be done. The bolts that come with the adapter are just a tiny bit too short. I'll do a bit of close up soon enough and, and show you all the modifications I had to do. But yeah, when it comes out of the box, the bolts to clamp the thingy over your, your uh, spacers, it's, the bolts are just tiny bit too short, so you'd have to change the bolts first step. Um, if you remove those two little plastic collars that are there to give you a, a tiny bit of uh, tilt backwards, backwards or forwards, then the bolts will catch. But obviously, yes, we, need, we kind of end up needing all the tilt we can get, but that's not the ideal solution. Um, so, so what I did is, um, yeah, I, I did a lot of filing and <laughs> to make it as upright as possible. Uh, as it is now, it looks to me from the side that it's probably as they intended for a normal bike with a quite steep head tube angle. And, and if I put my weight on the bike, there will be a, a bit of even more slumping backwards because my weight goes mostly through the back wheel. So, for example, if I put my dropper up, uh, then make a bit of sound and maybe pretend to be pedaling. So you can see, if I want to, I can kick the seat. But if I move my knees outwards by a tiny bit, not a huge margin, but a tiny bit, then no issues at all. And I, I found that that tiny amount of moving your knees, out, knees outwards it doesn't hamper your, your climbing or, or just riding around capability at all and um, the way I have the seat set up now is there is clearing between my chest and the seat and uh, for climbing I can get my weight down enough and, and the bike is long anyway so that also helps obviously. Uh, going downhill okay I mean downhill is a relative turn I'm not going to do anything too crazy with the baby on board but I mean at some point you end up getting a bit of a uh, you know, clearance issue, even with the seat drop. So normally I, I would have a lot of weight on my hands if I was doing bike park laps or just racing. So in this case, it's kind of more, you're, you end up doing a bit more, shall we say, traditional position when you ride, because obviously you have a bit of an obstacle here. So, so you will be hanging more from the back. I mean, we're not gonna do any, any you know, record breaking with this setup, so it's okay, it's okay, but it definitely move away from what I'm normally comfortable with. But yeah, like I said, it's it's not like we're gonna be go racing with the baby together. Um, goal is to go to the daycare, just keeping up, keep him happy and going around. He seems to love it a lot, so I think that's good. But um, I'm gonna change the camera angle a bit, show you on the nitty gritty details next. So yeah, just don't get your hopes up. You need a lot of <laughs> hacking to 
make this setup work. Okay, so why don't we start by removing this thing? And uh, there's a latch under the seat, which you just reach with your hand, pull, you hear, that, hear a bit of a sound, and then you just wiggle it loose like that. And here you can see the piece that the seat gets attached to. So it's a, it's a clip, clip in, clip out sort of thingy. Maybe I need a bit of a force with only one hand. Yeah, loud click, that's it. It's a tiny little tab that uh, has a red marking. Once, once, once that disappears, you're ready to go. Okay, let's see if I can remove this one handed again. And then we can move it aside. Oh, by the way, now is a good point to uh, talk about the first hack. So, here on the side, you, what the hell are these three screws? So, what I had to do is. Um, let me, let me get a better focus. What I had to do is instead of putting this footrest into the slot that it's intended to go, I had to put it on the side. I just used three screws. So what's that for? Okay, so if you put the seat with the footrest in their stock position, you'll have you'll have really, really ridiculous uh, little amount of of uh, turning radius. What I mean is that. Um, yeah, it just can't turn your, your handlebars that much. And if I can remember, like more or less how much it was, it was a tiny, tiny amount, maybe this much. And then you have, then the footrest hit the frame. And obviously that's not gonna work. I mean, I'm not even making it up. It, it was a tiny amount. So, you, so it's basically un unrideable in my opinion. So um, with this setup, we have, already a slightly better situation with turning the steering well, steering wheel is a bad word but the handlebar so let me just try to get that back in there and then can we get a bit of the top tube under the picture as well all right so now this is how much we can turn nowhere near full or you know, without the seat, but I've learned that this is plenty of, plenty enough out and about in the real life, because you're not going to be doing so tight turns. And uh, just to show you from this angle, it is indeed the footrest that will, will hit with the frame. I put a bit of a tape there on the frame to just keep the paint looking nice. So that's the first thing. And obviously when you drill something, you void your warranty. No doubt about that. Um, for the next thing, I'll, I'll take apart that uh, holder thingy, move it on the table, and we'll have a closer look. Okay, so a different angle of the adapter thingy. So basically you have the front part, the back part, two bolts, and a collar. There would be another collar here, but to make it all fit, I, I removed that. And uh, let me just take a seat and open one of that. So, on, the, on this piece, you can see a lot of grinding marks. So I've ground it sort of, uh, when this thing comes from the box, I mean, these faces are, are perfectly cylindrical. And it's these colors that you use to give it a bit of tilt, a tiny amount. So that was nowhere near enough. And, and so I've eaten into this just with a Dremel and a file, made it made it so that I can get a nice sort of tilt forwards. And as a counterpart, I also heavily ground down this uh, collar. Doesn't look too, too pretty, but at least <laughs> get good friction joint. And yeah, I mean, once it's all well bolted together, it results in a pretty nice tilt. I'll show you on the bike what it looks like. Okay, so once we're here, um, you can see that on top, on top uh, bearing and then the yeah, top cap, top piece. Uh, I have on top of that, I have a number of spacers. Basically, I, I put sort of all the st of it remaining steer tube into good use. So I, I wanted to have as much space as possible here below the stem and above the top cap. And then if I try and introduce this 
the picture, making sure I put the uh, ground faces in the right orientation. So you can see that this, compared to the to the steel tube, there's a lot of angle. So it's nowhere near like this, perpendicular. It's almost perpendicular when it comes up the box, and you can imagine how far back the child would be tilted. Probably be uncomfortable for him, but also I, I can't pedal. I mean, he's he's taking on the space. So I, what I've done is I've tried to use all this space here below the stem, above the top cap, and and sort of use all that available space to get as much angle as possible. At some point, I mean, you still need a bit of space between the, the stem and this. Uh, flange so that you can slide in the child seat. So in this setup, I've used all the amount of space, sort of used all that amount of space to get much as much as possible tilt, and then I can still just about slide in the the seat itself. And yeah, I mean, it still uses the central bolts. All this grinding and whatnot has has made made the um, interface short enough so that. The, the swap bolts will, will catch. There's the backing plate. I don't know. There. And then once I go ahead and tighten this up, it kind of settles into this tilted position because I, I made sure with all that grinding and filing that uh, the surfaces when they are, are per properly touching the force this tilt. And it's quite sturdy. I mean, when, when I go ahead and tighten this up to, to the torque value, it's not gonna move, that's for sure. So basically in summary, what we need to do is uh, we'll have to modify the, the child seat, foot pegs, just so that you can actually turn. And uh, on top of that, you'll have to do a lot of sanding and filing on select number of pieces so that you can get this adapter piece slanted as much forward as possible. And in this case, I mean, the more uh, steep your head tube angle is, so let's say, I mean, <sighs> I'll, I'll bet you that if anything below 70 degrees and you run into more or less issues. And it's kind of extreme case here when we, we are, you know, sub 65 degrees head tube angle. So, yeah, the product is not made, made for meant for these kind of bikes, so can't really be mad at Tula. I kind of knew I'd run into trouble. Um, I mean, all their ad advertisement pictures and everything is, has a normal city bike with 90 degree head tube angle almost. So I'm not that surprised that I had to go ahead and do a lot of work. But I mean, to you guys, it might be a bit of a letdown that it's not gonna work out of the box, no way. But uh, yeah, just sum it all up, it can be done, and hopefully this video will be helpful for anyone who is uh, contemplating purchasing this product. And, and yeah, depending on the bike you're putting it on, you might be in for a bit of a hack and botch job. Okay, thanks for watching.